Hi, and welcome to my science lab. In this video, we will introduce the basics of the polymerase chain reaction, or PCR. We'll review the history of PCR, typical components and principles of the reaction, PCR reaction types, polymerases available, and various applications of this widely used molecular biology technique. What is PCR? It's one of the most common techniques used in molecular biology. It is a quick way to amplify minute quantities of DNA to obtain millions of copies of DNA molecules. DNA polymerases used in PCR originate from thermophilic microorganisms and, therefore, are heat resistant. Their ability to withstand high temperatures is important in PCR because high temperatures are needed to melt or separate the double-stranded DNA. This separation then allows the DNA polymerase to synthesize complementary DNA strands. The technique was first published in 1985, and a Nobel Prize was awarded to Kerry Mullis for his invention of the PCR method. Researchers had been performing similar reactions since 1971, when Norwegian scientists Chal Kleppe and colleagues described an enzymatic process to replicate a short DNA template using primers in vitro. In 1988, the first PCR machine was introduced to the market. Since then, many improvements have been made to the reagents and instrumentation researchers use to perform PCR. These improvements in PCR technology have allowed for powerful achievements with far-reaching implications, such as sequencing of the first complete These individual human genome go through multiple cycles of the three main steps of PCR. Denaturation is the first step in the PCR reaction. The sample is heated at a high temperature between 94 and 98 degrees Celsius to separate the double-stranded DNA into single strands. The next step is annealing, at a temperature between 55 and 72 degrees Celsius, where the primers bind specifically to complementary sequences of both strands of the DNA template. The primers are designed to bracket the region that is targeted for amplification. The optimal annealing temperature for a particular primer pair can be determined experimentally by testing a range of temperatures around 3 to 5 degrees lower than the lowest melting temperature of the two primers. The final step is extension at 68 degrees Celsius or 72 degrees Celsius depending on the enzyme's optimal temperature. In this step, the enzyme extends the primer molecules by incorporation of the building blocks, the DNTPs. The polymerase can only start to replicate on the template where a primer has annealed to it. That means that the primer sequence is crucial for amplification of the correct part of the DNA. In some cases, the annealing and extension steps can be combined. This is known as a two-step cycling protocol. Thanks for watching. 